Welcome to Whole CEO with Lisa G. I'm the best-selling author of The Boss Weight Loss. I'm bringing you the top tips to be unstoppable. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to actually pull up a chair with today's top experts in weight loss, mindset, and business. Learn our top tips to set you up for success so that you can have more energy, be fit and resilient, and feel unstoppable. I am sitting down today with Lee Cuthbert, a senior marketing and business development executive with an extensive background in it, evangelizing technology to companies ranging from startups to Fortune 500 companies. After graduating from Harvard Business School, he started his sales and marketing career with Kraft Foods. Lee was recruited to launch a promotion division at Act Media, acquired by News Corp. In 1992, he co-founded Coinstar and helped invent the technology that now converts consumer coins into cash in machines located in 65,000 grocery stores worldwide. Hey, Lee. Hi, Lisa. How are you doing? I'm so excited to have you that we have this whole new thing with you here in person. And I want to jump right into the content. How can we turn challenges into success? Okay, that's a really good question. And first of all, thank you for having me here. Um, You know, if things were easy in business, people would already be doing it. And one of the things I've learned is um, the opportunity when you when you were confronted with a challenge, something that looks like you just you know can't surmount it, to actually think outside the box, turn those challenges into opportunities. A good example was when we developed the CoinStar machine. One of the key components was a coin counting mechanism. And the coin counting mechanism we bought from a Scandinavian company. In Europe, they recycle coins frequently, so coins don't build up any grit or dirt on them. And uh, But American coins sit in jars and a lot of dirt and dust. And when the coins went through the machine, the, the scan coin counting machine, um, all the grit shorted out the machine because there was a steel rail that the coins rolled down it's going to kill us right right if, if it shorts out the machine we can't use it no coin counting nope dirty so, coins <laughs> so we thought out of the box and we thought instead of a steel rail which sparks how about a ceramic rail now ceramic is used in lots of technology it's used in tennis rackets for example it's mm-hmm. very strong so we we engineered a ceramic rail and it was successful, no coins, no sparks occurred. And that presented an amazing opportunity for us because we patented the ceramic part of that machine. So no other company, including the company that makes the machine could use it without coming through us. So not only did we solve the problem, we put up a barrier to a competitor behind us. So um, you don't always have to use intellectual property to, uh, to, you know, to create a barrier. You can do things like um, exclusive agreements um, with uh, your customers and suppliers. So there's lots of ways to turn opportunity, to turn challenges into opportunities if you just think outside the box. Well, that's why I wanted to talk to you specifically because so many times I know me and all a lot of people I speak to We've all been faced with so many challenges lately, and it's just so easy to throw in the towel and give up. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to think outside of the box and just don't give up, just problem solve. And sometimes even for me, I like to get outside of my environment and travel, go for a walk, because sometimes ideas come when you're not focused on them and you're sure in meditation or you're Mm -hmm. on a beach walk. So I wanted to encourage you guys also to don't give up. We've all been through so much. I'd even go one step further. Welcome problems and challenges because they're the same problems and challenges your competitor is going to face. And if you 
if it were easy and there were no problems and no challenges, somebody would be already be doing it. So welcome them because that can put you um, ahead of everybody else if you stop and and uh, you know commit and think outside the box and solve the problem. This is exactly why I wanted to speak to you because we've all been through challenges. I myself have found that the road to success is never like that. It's more like that, like that, like that. And to pick yourself out of the valleys, you have to really just take a break. Don't freak out. Don't stress out. Just think outside of the box and get help. Isn't mm -hmm. it really important to have a mentor like yourself? Yes. And it really does help. Somebody within the industry, it, it's helpful. But you know what also is helpful? Somebody that has nothing to do with it, because sometimes they they can think of what you think is a wacky suggestion, but sometimes bringing new thinking in can really be helpful. I know, too, for me, mentorship has super help, been super helpful. And I also want to discuss, since you're such a business expert, like, I want you to talk to our audience about how do you actually speak and talk to potential new customers? That's one of the things that I've learned over the years is so, so important. Um, so many times I've gone in with a new idea, talk to a customer. And, you know, when you're excited about a new idea, talk to the customer, you think you, you think you know all the answers. And I made the mistake early on of walking into a, a customer with 20 years experience in an industry and saying, oh, here are my ideas and here's why you should use them. But I learned that those people are your best source of inspiration and information. So if I have a germ of an idea, I'll go in and I'll set up an appointment and talk to somebody and say, um, I'm thinking about starting a business in your, your, your business vertical. You've got all the experience. Here's some of the elements. Now, can you tell me some of the reasons this wouldn't work? And maybe some of the ways, if you were me, you would design a business to make it work? I love that. It's so, it's such an amazing spin on things instead of coming in like a know-it-all and I can fix all your problems. I have a great example. Um, I thought of an idea way back before streaming videos. Um, the ski condos um, welcome vacationers. And, and a lot of times they're in remote locations and they've got kids, so they wanna show a video. But there's not a lot of video rental stores you know, open at night when they check in. So my idea was to go to ski resorts, condominium property management companies and say, hey, how about if I set up an agreement with a local video company, you send out the letter saying, you're gonna be renting from us. Do you want to rent a video? And then what I'll do is I'll be the intermediary and go to the video stores and set that up ahead of time so that the video sits in the condo when they're when they're ready to check in. And I got sort of some lukewarm re lukewarm reception, um, but I asked a lot of people about it. But one guy said, "You know what? I really likely, you know, I don't have any money to buy, you know, little little gifts." And it was up in Vermont. They go, "You know those little." Um, uh, maple candies and um, some other little amenities, would you be able to supply them to me and I would buy them? So instead of saying, oh no, I'm doing video rental, I thought there was an opportunity. So I turned that around. My background was marketing and product sampling. So I thought instead of purchasing things, putting them in a basket and having them buy the basket for me, what about manufacturers that want to reach the target audience of families? shampoos, lotion, instant coffee, chocolates, things like that, that I could go to the manufacturers and say, I've got an audience of 500,000 families that are skiing. Wouldn't you like your product to be exposed to them? So I'm only going to charge you $90 a thousand. So you give me the product and pay me and I'll get my product in front of your target audience. So I got paid and the, re, the condominium property management company owners, when I talk to them, they go, well, I can't afford this, and it, it's free. All you have to do is put this in. So I turn something around. I, I love got, that. And so listening to somebody that's in the business helped me convert an idea that wasn't really that you know, imaginative into something that was important. 
Well, I love the fact that you're thinking in an open-minded way instead of being so married to, this is my idea, you suck, you don't like it. <laughs> Some of the times what I'll do is I'll walk in and if I just have a few minutes, I'll say, you know, I had this idea. Tell me first why it sucks. And then they'll just jump right in because no one ever sells them that way. And then I'll go, now, if you were me, how would you sell to you? Right. And they won't go, I don't know. They say, well, let me put on my expert hat. And if I were you, I'd do this. And I go, exactly. So how about that? So you're actually asking them how to sell to them right. by their ego, massaging exactly. their ego a little bit and acknowledging, which is the truth, which is they are the expert. Are the I hope expert. you guys are taking some notes here because we are talking to somebody who is a brilliant marketer, salesperson, and thinks outside of the box. And you guys should be writing this stuff down. That was a real <laughs> writer downer. And I have another question. Sure. Okay. A lot of us are in this new pivot mode with everything we've been thrown at and everything is different. So what if our interest is starting a new business? Do you have any tips on how can we be successful in starting a new business? What's the steps? My focus right now is calling on um, the retail vertical and I'm focusing on um, bars and restaurants that are high traffic and not the big chains because right. they've already got that solved. Okay. Independent bar owners of high traffic establishments. Now, they're incredibly busy and they'd rather focus on, you know, the server that didn't show up versus thinking big picture about marketing programs. They don't have the time, they don't have the training, and they, they've seen a million guys like me. Right. They'll, they'll Everybody wants in. to pitch them something. Right. And what they'll usually say is, um, first of all, it takes two or three meetings to actually find when they're there because they've got a lot of stuff going on. Right. And then they'll look at you with a glassy stare and thinking about all the problems they've got to solve. And you're going to try to sell them. And they go, you know, now's not a good time. Right. So come back next week. And if you've already tried three times to reach them and they look at you like that and say, come back next week, most people won't come back. They'll say, you know, I'm going to do something else. I come back. So and you're persistent, I'm consistent. Persistent. And I come back the next time and they're still busy. Right. And, but they've seen that I come back. So one of the, one of the little hints I'll give you, if you're calling on a retail establishment that sells product is, um, for an example, when I, when I call in bakeries, um, I buy something. Because they can't say, you know, I'm too busy, get out. And I go, well, I'm buying the eclair, so I'm, so can you talk to me? And I always order the most complicated thing to make. If it's just a donut, I give it to you. But it's like, you know, I like eclair, and can you get the whipped cream on and stuff? But, you know, even though it's expensive, they're making it and they're selling it, and then you talk to them. So Brilliant. be there, in, invest in their time, and then if they say, you know, I'm really busy, say. Great. Well, when's a good time to come back? You show up the fifth time. And when you start that meeting, you say, you know, that Aquarium made me was just amazing last time. You know, I'd love to have one after this meeting, but can I, can I talk to you for just five minutes? You know, it's got that, that's going to do, Lisa, it's going to, it's going to impress them because you showed up five times. I love that. And you really care about what you do. And subconsciously, that's what they do. They screen you by saying, come back, come back, come back, come back. And, you know, my competitor is going to stop after two or three times, but I keep showing up. And that's how I think you can be successful when calling on retailers. I love that. Show up. Show up because so many times if you ask for a sale, when you're on a call with somebody and they say, no, got to talk to my husband, mm -hmm. I can't afford it. Um, I've done everything and nothing works for me. It's really easy to give up, but I can tell you that in my career, my very first job I ever had, I was always in fitness and I wanted to work in sales and marketing in a health club in New York. Oh, wow. And it wasn't an easy job to get. And I knew that the guy had said when I met him, they could make 
at least $20,000 a year, which was at the time, well over 20 years ago, more money than I was making teaching exercise classes here and there. Mm -hmm. And I'm living in New York now compared to Hawaii, where I was living. Cost of living is not cheap. So I wanted the job. So he didn't hire me right away. And I kept on calling him and he didn't return my call. So I sent him a letter and I sent it by FedEx. And my persistence paid off. I got that job. Not only did I not make $20,000 that year, my first year, I made over $60,000. Congratulations. And go. I can tell you that if you guys are not taking some notes here, <laughs> if you have any ambitions of starting your own business, think outside of the box. In summary, acknowledge the actual experience of whoever you're speaking to and don't give up so quickly. Stay the course. And I know, Lee, that you are so involved in startups and Mm -hmm. helping charities. And I know you mentor people. Mm -hmm. Where can people find you and what else are you up to and how else can you help our audience be unstoppable? Great. Well, thanks, Lisa. One of the things that I'm passionate about is giving back. And um, I think I've discovered something that I put one unit of volunteer work in and I get 10 units of joy back. So I do a I do several things. Um, I'm right now business mentoring for, um, I'm an executive coach and mentor for an organization called the Honor Foundation. It's www.honor.org. They are a nonprofit that's been around five, about five years and they have three campuses throughout the United States and they help military veterans, specifically Navy SEALs and Army Green Berets transition from their military career to civilian life. They have full-time professors that teach courses, and but what I do is I'm I'm an, a volunteer coach that I make myself available to people that want to call me and just have a question. And there's 220 of us, and um, we're we're assigned one person every semester, and we have a we have a, a weekly phone call with them. And I got to tell you, those people are so. You know, we we can't thank them enough for what they do. Oh my gosh! And they're they work so hard, and they're wonderful, wonderful candidates for business. Of I mean, course. think about you're a team oriented person. You think outside the box. You work hard, and you sacrifice for your country. What employer wouldn't want? Oh to my hire gosh! Us? I would the discipline. I think it takes discipline. Yeah. So I'm so grateful that I can give back to those people. And it makes me feel wonderful when they say, Lee, can you help me? I mean, oh. I'm, I'm sort of tearing up now when I think about it oh because they're out there fighting for me. And then they, they oh. ask, and then they ask for my help. They and want I raise your my help. hand all the time. So the lesson here, folks, I hope you're listening is how good does it feel to give back when you're stuck in a pity party, which we've all been there. I've been there. What are the best ways? To get back out of that is to help somebody else. And I'll tell you a quick story. Um, uh, there were a couple different um, uh, Navy SEALs that I that I had mentored, and I was going to be down in the San Diego area, and I I had never met them because of uh, because of uh, COVID. So I I contacted each of them and said, Hey, I'm going to be in San, down in San Diego. Would you like to get together for coffee? And unbeknownst to me, they were surfing buddies. And oh they gosh. said, Oh, you're with Lee. So they said, come on down. And I went, oh, can I watch you surf? And they go, dude, we'll give you a surfing lesson. <gasps> so my first surfing lesson wow. was with two Navy SEALs. That and that's cool. what I got, but I didn't expect something. But how wonderful did that make me feel that they wanted to take time out of their day in the ocean with me? It's the coolest because when you give to others and serve and you leave with service mm-hmm. rather than greed, or what's in it for me, right. which is nobody's favorite radio station, <laughs> WIIFM. <laughs> yeah. Who can you help? And mm-hmm. you'll be amazed at how it comes back to you in spades. Isn't that true? It's so true. Any so other true. tips you want to leave our audience on being unstoppable and where we can find you? Never give up and give back. And we can find you on LinkedIn, right? Yes, I'm at... Uh, Lee Cuthbert, C-U-T-H-B-E-R-T, and um, I have a company called Skydeck Technologies, 
one of the main things that um, Sky Technologies does is I'm, I'm into renewable energy and I'm working with the second largest um, solar energy company right now. And I'm working on a bunch of residential projects. One of them is the house that sits right underneath the Hollywood sign. I'm going to be putting solar energy on that roof. I love it. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much Thank you, for being on great. Whole CEO with Lisa G as my first ever live guest. Thank you so much. I've had a great time. Thanks for coming to Whole CEO with Lisa G. I'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.